So Tesla makes their own batteries, but they don't make them in the hugest volumes. So why do they buy batteries? Why buy them at all? That's a question that came up on YouTube. And I wanted to bring someone in who knows a few things. So I reached out to Curious Peggy, uh, who you may know from X or from YouTube. He's a, a very sharp guy and knows a few things about a few things. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So, uh, Peggy, yeah, uh, I don't know if you know this, but Tesla has gotten into the battery game. Oh, yeah. They've got their 4680. They're, they are pioneering that form factor um, and some new uh, developments within the form factor. Dry cathode, famously. Sandy Monroe has told us that they already have a dry anode and that they're, um, that he is confident they will get their dry cathode sorted out. The cathode building is not quite done yet, so maybe that's part of the delay there. But there are other processes they can use. Should they wait for their own batteries or keep buying them from anybody who will sell them? Well, there is a um, battery sh shortage. Um, not to say for Tesla, but for everybody else. And as much as vertically integrated that Tesla is, um, Tesla is buying as much 4680 cells as they can from pretty much anyone. Latest, we just saw LG make, well, they didn't say who, but they said a big EV maker. So or EV battery maker. Yeah. EV battery maker. Yeah. So, and they have Panasonic and they have so many, and BYD even getting batteries from everyone because they're the only ones other than BYD that are scaling a lot of EVs and they're trying to transition majority of them to a 4680 battery. I mean, all the cyber trucks, if I'm not mistaken, has all the 4680 batteries in them. And they're trying to take all the EVs that they have and put it on the 4680 batteries because they're just more efficient and more stronger and better in all ways necessary. And Tesla themselves are having a hard time making these batteries, which is why they went and they made the lithium refinery plants in Texas so they can secure more of these. So, so many bears are coming out and it's very interesting. They're all coming out and saying, look at this, you know, they're not, they're not, you know, having enough batteries, they're buying from suppliers and all these other things, which is actually needed for Tesla to scale, to get them to their goal of if essentially, hopefully one day reaching 20 million vehicles or just scaling. Um, uh, just in general, I remember, I remember I made a post uh, of, of, um, and reason why batteries are very important is I made a post of, I wish they made the compact car sooner. And then you reposted it and you said, uh, Hey man, yes, but where are they going to get the batteries from? And I totally didn't, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. The batteries I mean, the compact car is a mass scaled car that needs a lot of batteries. Where are they going to get it from? So batteries, it's very important for Tesla to get as many as they can until they can, you know, supply as much as they can. And it looks like every gigafactory that they're building, um, they're making uh, a battery storage in every single gigafactory that they make because they need to make these batteries. And they want Something. them as close to themselves as they can. So, you know, and it's not just 4680s. If you look up 4680 plus the name of any major battery manufacturer, you will see that they are working on it if they don't have it yet. Panasonic and LG in the U.S. are work, both working on factories domestically that will produce them because you have to produce them domestically if you want the full IRA credit. So that's an important thing. And soon the minerals will be critical too, which leads to, as you said, the Corpus Christi refinery. So those are all steps that need to happen. But in the meantime, they're, they're buying from Panasonic, obviously. They're buying from LG for some of the Chinese and European cars. They're buying from BYD for some of the Shanghai and export vehicles. And they're buying from not, they're not buying from Samsung or SK, but I think they're basically buying from like five of the biggest 10 yeah. players in the world. And the supplies are coming from Japanese companies, Korean companies, Chinese companies, and of course, domestic production as well. They can't just sit back and wait. No, they can't. And, and uh, I've realized this, um, that making an EV is much harder than making a gas car because, well, the main component is batteries. And the reason why we don't see 
the other guys scaling, well, first of all, they do have a demand problem. But secondly, you know, getting the hands on batteries, it's it's not easy. I mean, we just saw GM who made a big deal with LG, I think it was 10 or $20 billion worth for batteries to be supplied for the whole entire decade, which is not many batteries, but they made this deal. So it just shows you how powerful and how important batteries are and how hard it is to make an EV. And um, Tesla's got it nailed. Tesla's got it nailed and they're trying to use the best batteries they can for the best products. So absolutely. A battery factory is incredibly complex. It's not as simple as a machine shop that makes an engine block. We've seen mm -hmm. how the struggles Tesla's had to ramp batteries, but these factories are not easy to build for anyone. We saw Panasonic struggle to ramp batteries in, in Nevada on a known chemistry, a known procedure, a known process. So it's not all that important. One issue that somebody had suggested to me was the fact that having their own ability to produce cells could also give them leverage when it comes to negotiating prices on batteries from other providers. You think that's a possibility? If if Tesla could do it themselves? Well, they do do it themselves. Yeah, they, they do. What they could say is, is look, Panasonic, I know you want, you know, $80 a kilowatt hour. We're, we're producing for 80. We'll just ramp up ours instead of yours, and then we'll be at 78. You're going to cut me a deal or not? And by the way, I've also got LG barking at me to get some, some orders in. Do you think being able to produce their own gives them pricing leverage? Um, if the other EV make, well, car, car companies do end up, of course, of course, that will be the case. They will have a, well, if you make it in-house or if you can make it closer to your factory, it's obviously going to be cheaper and could bring down the cost. So 100% if that's the case, but I highly doubt any of those guys are going to ditch Tesla from one of the other guys. No, I, and that's, it's, it's just hard to yeah. see that. That's the big thing is that there was, if you went back a year ago, you could see how very serious the, the looming battery crunch was. And then a lot of big companies said, you know what, we're going to scale back our ambitions for a year or two. And that, so that creates a little bit of extra supply in the market. But that also creates a, a bad impression for those manufacturers. Tesla is the buyer of choice because we know they're all in. When they place an order, if they come back and say, I need to change that order, it's to increase it. That's just how it works. Yeah. And a oh, comment yeah. that replied to both of us on the discussion we were having about why not do compact first. So there were some great replies on that. One, yeah. one was... No, they, but Elon said they have enough batteries. And I said, yes, for the Cybertruck, not for the Compact. If they'd gone yeah. to the Compact, then they would have a supply crunch. If today they were making 2 million more cars than they are, or even a million more, there would not be enough batteries. But then I think it was Lightning Ryan Fulcher who said, well, if getting all the way to the Compact is the only thing that matters, they should have also skipped the Y, the 3, the S, and the X and just gone straight to the <laughs> yeah, Compact. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> and, I thought, and I thought, right, that would, have been, that would have been great. The market wouldn't have supported it. And I see Cybertruck as a bit of a development platform for some mm -hmm. of the methods that are coming next. Each, we saw with first the Giga castings, then the structural battery, step by step, they're moving towards Unboxed. And Unbox is brilliant. The missing pieces, I talked to an engineer a year ago and said, what are the obstacles? And he said, it, it, he said, it can't be done. You can't do unbox. It's not, a, everybody's wanted to do this since forever. You can't do it because the structure of the car has to be continuous. And I said, right, but with the structural, he goes, okay, so they got that part figured out, but you've still got hydraulic lines for your brakes and your steering and all that that run the length of the car. And uh, I said, what if, what if it was steer by wire and brake by wire? And he said, oh gosh, that would, okay, well, so you no longer have hydraulic lines, so you could do it. And then uh, I said, uh, he goes, but you still need the wiring harness. And I said, what if it's ethernet? He's like, nope, that would do it. That would do it. You could, you now have all the pieces to do the unboxed uh, with the only missing piece being a fail safe for the brakes, which I suggested would be regenerative. That car can get you from zero to 60 in three seconds. It can get you from 60 to zero in three seconds on just the motors. So, so hold on a second. Were you the one who got the Cybertruck to where it is now with all the wire steer by wire and all that kind of stuff? Uh, I'm not. 
but uh yeah i know yeah. the suggestion you made though was like yeah, yeah. wait a minute <laughs> it, it all makes sense and then the move to 48 yeah. volt architecture means you can actually have motors powerful enough to do those things to do the steering yeah. and the braking so nice. all the pieces came together all at once and it just kind of made sense so looking forward at at batteries uh do you see tesla's shift to in-house production being more than 10, more than 20%, more than 50% in the next five years, 10 years? Well, if they want to be more vertically integrated, I think um, they would have to increase that substantially because, I mean, again, as, as we were meant to talking earlier, is they have like four or five suppliers supplying them with 4680 batteries. It shows you how much they need in supply of this. So maybe, maybe Giga Mexico or the other phases of Berlin could have more space for batteries. And um, I think the lithium refinery that they're doing only has enough for 1 million, which is not enough for Tesla. So maybe they'll go into that even more. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, batteries, if you don't have the batteries, you can't make the car. So I, 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 I do see them increasing space in their own gigafactories to make more batteries, which does make sense. It's better to make your own batteries and rely on suppliers. Um, so yeah, it does make sense if they do increase capacity in their own gigafactories. And Giga Berlin does have a battery building, a 4680 building. It's the one at the southeast corner right by the where the railroad bends. They just they were going to equip it first and they decided to instead equip Texas to line up better with the production needs of the Cybertruck and mm. to get the domestic battery supply into the to get the domestic battery supply moving in order to meet the uh IRA deadlines uh, for domestic sourcing. So yeah. all of that is very helpful. Uh, guys, uh, should Tesla, my question for you all is, should Tesla continue buying from everybody they possibly can, keeping these partnerships alive and well? Should uh, they expand partnerships with companies like BYD, who seems to have a uh, we're stronger together mentality? which I think could be helpful, but maybe you disagree and you need to tell me that. Uh, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it into them in the comments below. And for everybody else, if you get a chance, maybe uh, head over and see what Curious Peggy is up to on the X, on the YouTube, and, uh, you know, show some love. And uh, everybody else, uh, like, subscribe, do the usual thing, and stay tuned. Stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flip leaf flop Thank you, Brian, and everyone smash that like button and hit subscribe. Let's go.